as we approach Tisha B'Av, we have to ask ourselves a very simple question. And the question is, why, after almost 2,000 years, that the Beis HaMikdash has been destroyed, do we still continue Tisha B'Av? After all, today we're living in Eretz Yisrael, and go to the coast of Marovi. The old city is largely in our hands. What is it about Tisha B'Av that we continue and nothing has changed? When we begin the kinnis on Tisha B'Av, the first word is Shavas. The world stopped. It was the world before the Chorban Abayas as the world after the Chorban Abayas. The world before the Chorban Abayas has totally changed. It's not there anymore. We live in a different world. And we look at that world and we won and we have to reflect what was it that we lost and why is it that we lost it and how do we get it back. And that's the purpose of Tisha B'Av. The Rambam writes at the beginning of Hilchas Tainus. What is a Tainus? The Rambam writes, what is a Tainus? Comes from a mitzvah. Mitzvah Sasei Achasi. In the mitzvah in the Torah. Lizok Lifnei Hashem Bechol Eis Tzoro Gedol Lishelo Tavo Alatzibor. When any large sora happens to the tzibur, to scream to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Torah. He says it's Mitzvah Zesim in Torah. Shenemar al Chatzar Hatzor Eschem. Kol Dova Sheyetzalochem. Anything that affects you, Kugong Batzores, drought, Deva, a massive plague like we have today. Arba, massive locusts. We don't have it here. S- sweeping Africa. Zohar Scream to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. V'dovet zeh. Midarke ha-tshuvahi. Screaming is not, doesn't mean anything. Without introspection, there's no purpose to the scream. It's blowing chatzotzos. Shebezman shetov al tzara, when the tzara comes, we yizaku alav, and we scream to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Yaru, and we blow chatzot so even. Yedu hakol, that is meant to awaken everybody. Shebegla maaseim haroim huralah, it that the world it does not run just through natural causation. Anything that happens to the individual. Anything that happens to the tzibur is a result of HaKadosh Baruch Hu making sure that it happens. HaKadosh Baruch Hu does not allow things to happen unless he makes them happen. A tzibur is not negatively affected by any sorrow, any disaster, any illness to the tzibur, any famine to the tzibur any plague to the tzibur, unless HaKadosh Baruch Hu is bringing it on us because he wants us to introspect, look at ourselves, and do tshuva. He says, V'yizehu, and it's this tshuva, She'yigram lahem lahasir hatzora me'alehem. And if they want to know how to get rid of this plague, you know how to get rid of this plague? Only one way, through tshuva, says the Rabbah. Aval, im yizaku. What happens if people will not introspect? Lo yariu. And they do not blow chatzotzos. Ere yomru. And what will they say? Tov is in This is just the way the world goes. They're 
physical realities in this world, the political realities in this world, the economic realities in this world, there's nature, there are viruses, there's global warming, whatever it is. The Tzara Zu Nikra Mikras, and it just happened to have happened. There's no divine causation. Harezeh Derech Achzoria, says the Rabbah. This is cruelty. Why does the Raman call it cruelty? Why? Because you go Because the only way to rid ourselves of what's happening to us is through tshuva. And if you don't introspect, you're making sure that it continues. You're causing damage to the tzibur. A toast of hot tzara, tzara sacheris, and from this tzara, other tzaras will happen. Who shall cause about Torah? It's the Torah says in Parshas Bechu Kosa, Allah to me me carry, Allah to me Bechamas carry. Sheovi alem tzara, when I bring a tzara, kedei shetoshuvu im tom rushu hu carry. To tshuva. Tom rushu carry, and if you say it's just, the way it is. That's what nature is. That's what science decrees it has to be. That's what the economics of the world decides it has to be. That's where the political forces of the world are separate. Osef Lochem. HaKadosh Baruch will bring more. Hamas Kerry. Umedivrei Sofrim and Medirabonon lehis anos al kol tzora shetobu al hatzibu at shidrachman rashamay. Medirabonon, they said something else. Not only to Davin, not only to scream, but when every tzara happens, and there's a tzara to the klal, we have to accept it as divine punishment and declare a tainus. Ad sheyuruchmu min ha-shamayim. Now, that is about a current tzara. What about past tzaras? So if you take a look in the Rambam Perakeh, Take a look at the Rambam and Perakeh. Yeshem Yomim, there are days. Shekol Yisrael misa'anim bohem. Menei hatzaro shiru. A tainus is a day of tshuva. And there are days, he says, Kedei lo'ore halavavos, v'liftolach darke hatshuva. Why do we fast on Tisha B'av? Why do we fast in Shavos HaBatamos? Why do we fast in Asar Bateus and some Gedalia? He tells. Because it's a zikaron lemaseinu haroim to our evil deeds. Umaisav aseinu shahoyo kama aseinu ato. Ad shegaram lohem velanu also hatsaros. That if the Chorban Beis Hamikdash continues to our day, then that means we are continuing in the ways that cause that destruction. And it, <coughs> the various service for which we fast continue to our day, it's because we're an extension of those various that caused it. And would we have the proper tshuva and not continue the Averis of our forefathers, then the service would end. What happened the Chorban Beis Hamikdash is a very, very simple thing. It's called Golos Hashchina. The relationship between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Klal Yisrael is a dynamic relationship. At the last Nevoa, that was ever said to Klal Yisrael. And the Vua, the very end of Sefer Malachi, Shuvu Eilai Vah Shuvu Eileicha. There's a dynamic relationship between ourselves and our Kaddish Baruch And in that dynamic relationship between ourselves and our Kaddish Baruch as we distance ourselves from Him, He distances ourselves from us. And then we create a situation of Hester Shechina. Has to, has to upon him. 
Well, HaKadosh Baruch is still running the world. But he runs it from behind a, a veiled curtain. And there are different degrees. And at the and in the worst part, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has to rast Baal Shem said, what does Hasteras to me? I will hide the Hest upon him. Because sometimes HaKadosh Baruch who works from the back of a screen. But you can see that it's HaKadosh Baruch who running it. On the other hand, sometimes the Hest upon him is so hidden, it seems that HaKadosh Baruch just abandoned us. And that's Hasteras to The Hest upon him is Nista. And HaKadosh Baruch is always running it. So let's see what Tisha B'Av is about, what Shavu Sabbatam is about, and why we continue fasting. Rambam says, Nigzar al Yisrael ba Midbor sheli konsula aretz. We're still fasting today. For the Xerah and Tishabov, that they should not go into Eretz Yisrael. We're still fasting because of that. Number two. Charev Habayas Barishonu Ubishniyo. We're still fasting, not only for the second base of Mikdash, for the first base of Mikdash. Why? Because even when they built the second base of Mikdash, they never reestablished that connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that they once had. There was no ha- same Hashras Hashchina. There was no Nevoah. There was no Ruach HaKodesh. There was Urum Vatumim. That intimate connection between HaKadosh Baruch Hu and Klai Yisrael that came from the Beis HaMikdash that was symbolized by this Mikdash, as we'll see, that was never fully recovered, only partially. So therefore, we're still wondering about those old Averis of Avodah Zergil Arayis and Shri I will have to see. L'nilka de'ir gedola u'beit ha'shma, the destruction of Beitar. Ho'yu ba'alofim revavos, the tens and tens of thousands of Jews there. Ho'yu ba'alofim revavos, and it was totally destroyed and everyone killed them. They thought Mashiach was here. It was an unbelievable tkufa. Had Rabbi Kiva, had Bar Kochba, the Jews had taken control of the land, and they thought Mashiach had come. And it turned out it wasn't. And on this day, the Beis HaMikdash had been destroyed. But 50, 60 years later, when the Jews were in Israel, and there were still remnants of the Beis HaMikdash, and there's still something that was the center of their attention, Tunesufa Tzarashe said, No. Tzion... Soda Techoresh. He brought a plows and they plowed up the land. They plowed up the land. It was just a barren, just a barren field. That's all. It ceased to be a center of attraction to Klaiser. They had no Zeichat that there was a base of Mikdash there. Except, except, except the coast of Maravi. So they, we shouldn't think that there's any remnant of the Hashra Sashkina. No. It's gone. The Chaim Velazhin and Nefesh Chaim tells us a story. Quotes the Zohar Kodesh. Zohar Kodesh says, the people were confident that there was no way the enemy could penetrate into the Beis HaMikdash. Because after all, there's the Kodesh HaKadoshim. And that Kodesh HaKadoshim was so Kodesh that as anyone who went in not improperly would die on the spot. That's why when the Kohen Godel would go in on Yom Kippur, they would have a rope around his waist. Because maybe he would be Meshana, he would change 
the way the Ketoros is burnt there, according to the Tzedukim, and he would die on the spot. They had to be able to pull him out. The intensity of the Kedusha meant that if you did one minor iota of violation of anything that was supposed to be done, that you died on the spot. You violated the Kedusha. So how could Titus and Russia go in there? And it says, Zoya says, it was like grinding flour that was already ground. And grinding, that means the amount of Kedusha in the base of Mikdosh reflects the amount of Kedusha that is within Klal Yisrael. Our Madrega of Avodah Sakharish Baruch Hu, our Madrega of Midas Tafos, of Dvekas Barakodesh Baruch Hu, of Amun and Bitochen, that's what ingests Kedusha into the base of Mikdosh. And if we fall down, and we're not on that proper level, and Klai Yisrael is not ingesting that amount of Kedusha to the Beis HaMikdush, the Beis HaMikdush loses that Kedusha. And then when Tito Sarasha came, it was nothing but an empty shell. No problem. We either put it, the Kedusha into the Beis HaMikdush, we took the Kedusha out of the Beis HaMikdush. And when Tito Sarasha came, the Vuchan Sarasha came, what was happening? He found that it, it was a physical building, it was an empty shell of Kedusha. And that empty shell of Kedusha meant that there was no way the Kedusha would prevent Tanasufa Sarasha, of Tita Sarasha, when the Wuchanot Sarasha, when destroying a base of Mikdash. No. We destroyed it ourselves. And it says, Call out door, any generation. Then the base of Mikdash is not rebuilt, it says if it was destroyed. Why? Because let's say we build a base of Mikdash. And it was not, and we we put up a building. And we Klal Yisrael would not be on the right Madrega, on the right level, base of Mikdash would be destroyed on the spot. Because there's no justification of it. It's not a physical building. It's a physical building that symbolizes we also live mikdash for shachanti pesolcha, which Bo has to dwell within us, and that's why Tisha B'av has to be a day of tshuva for us to say what was lost it wasn't just a physical building, it wasn't a national symbol, it was that deep connection between ourselves and Hakadosh Baruch. The Medrash says. Then after the Chorban, Yemiyo Anavi was sitting next to the, the destroyed base of Mikdash, and a Greek philosopher passed by and says, Yemiyo, you taught me such great wisdom. Why are you crying over Eitz and Vavonin, wood and stones? Yemiyoah Novi said, you know why? Because where did I get all that Chochmah from? From the Beis HaMikdosh. She'ebonei Beis HaMikdosh b'meri rabbi ameinu v'sein chalkeinu b'sar ha'secha. Shom navod chok. That, that deep connection that existed between Kla Yisrael and Kodesh Baruch Hu and Beis HaMikdosh that gave us tremendous wisdom, Havana Satora. And without that connection we lose that Havana Satora. So let us just understand, first of all, the Chorban Beis HaMikdash. The first Beis HaMikdash was Charif. And there are two separate Gemaras. There's one Gemara that says, why was it Charif? Avodah Zorah, Gilerayas, and Shvich Zdomen. Now that is three Averus Chamur Shabbatora. But there's another Gemara. Dovazer, another Maimah Chazal. Dovazer, Sholo Chachonim. Dovazer, Sholo Neviyah. No one had an answer. Alma of the Haaretz. Why was there, why was the base of Mikdash destroyed and the land rendered desolate? Achibar Kodesh Baruch 
Also, Mr. Ross, a bittle Torah. Bittle Torah. Now, what's right? Is it our Zorgi, the Rai, or is it built to Torah? So the Nitziv says, I've seen it in many others, and Nitziv expounds on it probably more than anybody else. Yeah, say no Hanami. There's nothing as serious as three Averis, our Zorgi, the Rai, and Shvichus But there's one thing that's more Chama. That's Bittal Torah. Lima Torah is such a mitzvah that had Kla Yisrael been involved in Lima Torah, that would have prevented the Avorazor Gilarayas and Shvichos Domen from causing a Chorban. It would have made an unbelievable protective shield that would have shielded Kla Yisrael from Saras. Avorazor Gilarayas Shvichos Domen, the three worst of Avorazor. But, but everything in life is a balance. Averis and mitzvahs. Serious Averis, serious mitzvahs. Lima Torah is so powerful that it would have protected us. But the moment we got rid of our protective shields and you believed in armies and you believed in fighting and you believed in everything, then without that protective shield, it was inevitable of what a Zorgil arise in Shvichostan. Now, it's a very deep limud. Torah protects. That doesn't mean if I go out, and to, some people have a very simple minded attitude. If I go out onto the battlefield with a Gemara, and I'm learning Gemara, and the bullets are shooting, it won't hurt me. No, 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 no. It's accusing Chazal and Torah being simple minded. What is it? There's a national level. And Lima Torah contributes to the national level of the Ruchnius and spirituality and the Madrega of Klai Yisra. connects them to HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the most powerful way. And what is the level of Klai Yisra that Klai Yisra deserves to be protected? Kai Yisrael deserves to be destroyed. What ingests Kedusha into the base of Mikdash? We're taking it out with our Averis, we're putting it in with our mitzvahs. And what's the most powerful mitzvah to inject Kedusha into the base of Mikdash? It's Limit Torah. But then, something else. And that's why at Yom Azeh, we're still, it's not only the second base of Mikdash. It's the first base of Mikdash also that we talk about in our kinis, we talk about in our Avelus, because we're still continuing there. Now, second base of Mikdash, the Gemara says, because of Sinas Chinam. What does Sinas Chinam mean? People have platitudes that don't mean anything. Sinas Chinam, Avas Chinam. Okay. You had. At the time of Beitar, Rebbe Kiva, the Godel of Tanoim, that even Moshe Rabbeinu was overwhelmed by his level of Torah. And he had a yeshiva. doesn't say 24,000 Talmud of 12,000 Chavrusas. The Nogu covered Zebazeh and then entreat each other with their Heretz. Kodesh Baruch Hu says, I'm not interested. Goodbye. Rebbe Kiva, 24,000 Talmud, and they died. Why? They didn't have basic derecherets of one for the other. Take a look at the Natsiv and Zagdamba Tabracious. They were all Kura Chachomim. What is the Sinis Chinim that existed in the Beit Hamikdash? Spei Sheni. He says, oh, it was everyone had his own derechavoda and couldn't deal with the other person's derechavoda. There's not the mutual respect for each Jew's sincerity. Do you see the sincerity of another Jew's derech avoda? Or, no, my derech avoda is the only way. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about our normal interpersonal relationships. 
We're talking about one group of Jews way of serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu, without respecting the other groups way of serving HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We're talking about not valuing Limit Torah. We're talking about what a Zor Gil writes in Shri What does it mean we still have Shri Chazdam? Ma'abim Pnei Chamer or Barabim? Shri Chazdam. Tos takes it very, very seriously and says that Shri Chazdam is Yaharik Val Yav. Gil Arayas, we live in a world that's overwhelmed by Zeus. And to what degree do we participate, at least mentally, personally, in that vulgar world, the way we talk? Do we just separate ourselves from that vulgar world? Or to some degree, we're part of it, by the way we talk, the way we think, what we look at. What is Avodah Zarah? Avodah Zarah means, it's the flip side of why Klaiso couldn't come to Israel. Thinking HaGadosh Baruch Hu is not hands-on running the entire world. Understanding that there's one, the HaGadosh Baruch Hu is the Ilas Ho Ilos Mokhtu He's running the entire world. He's dominating the entire world. Anything that happens in this world happens because of Him. Do we understand that? How deeply does it go into us? When we look at today's pandemonium in the world with the coronavirus with this with everything it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu running the world the opposite of that is natural causation isn't that the way in our scientific world we think isn't that reverting back to what Avodah Zarah was all about we have a lot of introspection to do we can go through every one of these but at the end of the day Every Jew on Tisha B'av has to understand what are we mourning for? We're mourning for the distance we have from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Golas Hashchim. And that is still existent at Ayom Azeh. We can have whatever we have in Yerushalayim, but there's a Golas Hashchim. That is something that we have to recapture. We have to inject Kedusha through our interpersonal relationships, through being tolerant of every Jew's sincere, genuine derech And we have to know in our simple life to make sure every Jew is respected. Amir Hashem, if we rise to the occasion, we will be bringing the Binyan Beis HaMikdosh Mamei Rebbe Yomeinu. Oh